present history. On this one, I've already got the inspection one up, is we did ask those extra questions, especially with a low back injury, of what aggravates it and what makes it better. So we're trying to pick out some things. Um, and you don't have to say this, but that tended to be whether they're more of a flexion or extension exercise person. Do you build up the extensor here, or do you build up the flexors here to support the spine? So things that aggravate or make better the spine, or some new ones work with them, makes her feel better. That would be a legitimate question. Um, <laughs> So inspection, um, we had kind of the two things. It's just generally inspecting the area for, you know, it doesn't say it on here, but it's well, it's got a little But the other thing we were looking at was the positional things. So what we want when the person's sitting, and you don't have to stand, but when the person's standing, when they're walking, you know, whatever they're working on, the typewriter, computer, because that's what they do, we look at their posture. And the things we look at in their posture is their head position. So is their head normal versus a lot of people it's jutted forward so their head's more in alignment with the spine. Uh, their back position, do they have a normal good back position with a little bit of a lumbar curve so they're not way too straight or they're not hunched over as most people are in their back position. In general, you're looking at muscle tone. Does it look like they have good muscle tone that it might be muscle weaknesses that are causing problems, okay? Um, chest position. So you're looking at the, the, the chest is not slumped in, nor you know, way pulled back and tied to a military position that they have kind of a relaxed in between chest position. Okay? Uh, buttocks position, well, she's seated, so that's a little hard to see, but if they were standing, it's the you know, butt kind of hanging way out versus the butt nicely tucked in. Okay? A lot of times that's hamstring weaknesses that allow that butt to come out. Um, we're looking at general spinal curvatures excessive in the thoracic, excessive in the lumbar, and spinal curvatures on the sides of your spinal curvatures. Um, abdominal position, are they kind of, you know, with the shoulders, the bellies hanging out, I think my belly was a little bit bigger, are they nicely tucked in and they're engaging their core? Okay, so what does that look like? So is it core engagement or just Palpation is maybe you want to sit behind the belly. You want to sit facing that way, like on the edge of the table. Maybe you can see the slides, but the camera can also see you. Okay, so I'm relaxing here. But but we're looking at the spinous processes, so I'm doing a cervical eval. Sorry, you will do that all the time. You'll transition into a different eval and I'll just kind of look at you like this. So so excuse me. So some of the things we're looking is we're palpating each spinous process, looking for problems. When we've identified a spinous process, we can come off to either side, and we're kind of looking for even depths of the transverse processes that might indicate that a facet joint's a little bit out of place, okay? Um, I'm not gonna do it, but we could palpate the posterior coccyx to see if they were complaining of more of pain. Um, or, and I will do this one, is if I, kind of find the iliac crest, then I can come into either side and look at the same iliac joint. Okay. And that one, if you don't mind standing up for a second, I'm going to cheat. I'm going to sit down. Okay. This, this one's a little easier. The SI joints to find while a person standing. You can kind of find that iliac crest. They're standing. They're not sitting on their toes. You can find that SI joint. Okay. Sit back down. Okay. Um, and most all these were looking fractures, though for the SI joint, I didn't put it down there. You could also be looking for a sprain. Um, soft tissue palpation, uh, we're looking for the paraspinal muscles. So in general, I'm <laughs> sitting on your foot. spinal muscles on either side of the spine, okay? And then on this one, I don't know where we did or didn't cross it off, but I think we were saying, okay, but we'll go with it, is this was that one where it was the kind of the Captain Morgan test, so if you don't mind standing, it's this leg, so if you just put that leg up here, then kind of just in a relaxed position where your knees bent like that, and table's kind of in the way, and I'm not going to palpate it anyway, but if I came halfway between the greater trochanter, and the SI joint here went up into this area, is that would be the piriformis muscle normally where you're having that side. Um, that would be the piriformis muscle. 
site. Okay. So then we have no stress tests, so we have some um, special tests for the SI joint, um, and we have a pelvic block test. So if you don't mind just scooting all the way back in line. Okay. So we have the pelvic block test, and it's kind of the opposite of what it seems. But if I come in here and I try to spread the ASISs apart, I'm spreading the AISs apart, but that's technically taking the SI joints and compressing them. And we're looking to see if that causes pain that would indicate that she has a ligaments problem with the uh, joints. The other one, you want to just roll over on your side towards me? Okay. So the other one, oh, that's the one we didn't have a picture of, is this is the one where I'm coming in, I normally would come in from behind, but just for the cameras, is we were kind of like this as a CPR position pressing down like that. So the weird thing is I'm compressing the ASI joints together, which compressing here is potentially going to distract the SI joints. Uh, so if there's ligamentous injuries. Okay. Don't need to know this for the cameras, but when I do the compression here, which distracts, that's more the posterior ligaments. And when I did the other one where Laura was laying down and I was distracting, which compressed, that was more just this SI joint. So that's kind of important in some of these because you might ask, okay, you did that test, but was it that SI joint or this SI joint? Is this is that one you want to make sure they don't fall off the table. You're already there. Um, actually, if you grab your knee, so I like the patient actually grabbing their knee versus up there, and I take this and I force that down. this, the other legs like this. Thank you, I was going to go do it the wrong way, but you're doing it the right way. You're saving my butt, but not down since I said it on the camera. Um, is because we've been always doing the left leg as the injured leg, okay, for both of these evals, is I put you up into this flex, abducted, externally rotated position with this foot on the knee of the side I want to test. The side I really want to test is the straight leg, and I'm doing some distraction there. I push down here just to rule out some hip problems on here, but then the motion's like that, and I'm testing this SI joint. Hopefully I would have figured that out, because I was going to go the other side and do it about halfway through. I figured out it was going to be the wrong side. And then you just make the mention of, well, I was just testing the other side for comparison. And then you go back and do the real side. So that's how you, you realize in the middle of the test you're doing the wrong side. Um, so the, the favor test. Then we had some tests, these are on the back side of your sheet, but we had some tests that were for spondylolisthesis, and that's the one where I have the double fracture. And you, you, oh, that's good. Um, is, this is that one where you have them standing on a single leg, just what you like, um, is you have them standing on a single leg, and you have them leaning back until they fall, okay? and seeing if that severe hyperextension causes pain there, okay? So normally that's gonna cause pain if this side's fractured, the side that was down, and then we start crossing our fingers like, uh-oh, she's at least got a fracture on one side, we do it on the other side where we have to stand on this side and lean back and if you get pain again, we're looking for a double fracture. And you're gonna have to go, you don't personally, but you would have to go back to your mobile extend your back and you would have to really hyperextend your back to even create enough pressure on there. Okay. Most people that would have been, you know, pain before then, but for your okay. Then we had some other tests that we're looking at. Did like I have a herniated disc? Is I have a herniated disc. And we got the uh, Milgram's test. And that Milgram's test was like that really mean thing your PE teacher made you do where you had to hold your legs at this point and hold your breath and hold it. And the idea is if they can't hold it for 20 or 30 seconds, then that might indicate that they have a disc problem or they start actually experiencing that sciatica pain down their leg. Okay, so that was the Milgram's test. The 
Paul Salva test was just, uh, you can say that one for a second, if you don't mind. The Paul Salva test was just what? You know, holding your breath, bearing down as hard as you can, like you were needing to uh, excrete on the toilet, um, and seeing if that created pain in your lumbar spine or should you have died by We had the Beaver's test for nerves, and the Beaver's test is technically you don't have to, but technically we'd expose the umbilicus, and we'd ask them to do a little partial sit-up. It may not be hold down to the leg, but just be lifting the shoulders just off like that. There you go, and relax. And we'd see if that umbilicus stays in that place. And here's, remember, the key thing is if the umbilicus goes to one side or the other, it's going to go to the stronger side. So it would indicate that there's a pinch nerve on this side. So kind of simultaneously, we test T5 through L12, so T5, 6, 7, T5, 10, 11, 12. Okay, I'll point to this. Did I say L12 or something T5 through T12. I think I said T5 through L12. Such thing. Okay. Um, then we have some of these other impingement tests and the well straight laying test. We keep saying this is the injured side. So all we're doing is kind of holding this leg down and just doing a hamstring stretch. And if that creates pain on this side or creates pain shooting down the sciatic nerve in the back of the leg, then that's an indication that there's something taking up space in the spine. Space so that was the well-straight leg raising 